Now let's understand the formula for some of the factors of any number n. So if uh, any number n which can be prime factorized in such a way that a, b, c, d, etc. are the prime factors of n and p, q, r, s, etc. are the respective powers of those uh, prime factors of n, then the sum of factor is given by this formula. The formula can be derived uh, easily. Uh, rather than taking the variables, I am taking the numbers to understand that how we have arrived to this formula. So let me assume that there is some number say 36. I have to prime factorize it. So it will be 2 to the power 2 and 3 to the power 2. So the number of factors will be 3 into 3 and that is 9. So there are total 9 factors of 36 and we want to find the sum of all those 9 factors. And the number of ways wherein we can generate all those factors are by various combination of the ways, uh, the number of ways the 2s and 3s can be used, which we have seen in the last video. So 2 can be used in 3 ways, that is 2 to the power 0, 2 to the power 1 and 2 to the power 2. Similarly, 3 can, 3s can be used in 3 ways, that is 3 to the power 0, 3 to the power 1 and 3 to the power 2. Now the all these combination, now the total combination will be 9. And but we need to find the sum of all these factors. So what I can do is that I am just uh, taking all these combination and will add to get the sum of all the factors. So if I take 2 to the power 0 with 3 to the power 0, then the factor would be 2 to the power 0 into 3 to the power 0. Similarly, if I take with 2 to the power 0 with 3 to the power 1, then the next factor will be 2 to the power 0 into 3 to the power 1. And if this combination goes, then it will be 2 to the power 0 into 3 to the power 2. Similar way, I can write all these factors. So, so I have written all the factors which are possible. We can count it at these are uh, total 9 factors. And we need to get the sum of it. So, let me put plus sign between these factors. Now, again, uh, what I will do is I will take the common terms together. So, so, the first three terms here can be written as 2 to the power 0 into 3 to the power 0 plus 3 to the power 1 plus 3 to the power 2. Similarly, the next three terms can be written as 2 to the power 1 multiplied with 3 to the power 0, 3 to the power 1 and 3 to the power 2. And the last three terms can be written as 2 to the power 2 multiplied with 3 to the power 0, 3 to the power 1 and 3 to the power 2. Again, we can see that in all these three terms, uh, this particular expression is common. So taking common out, so we are left with 2 to the power 0 plus 2 to the power 1 plus 2 to the power 2 whole multiplied with 3 to the power 0 plus 3 to the power 1 plus 3 to the power 2. So at last what we have found that this product will give me the sum of all the factors. Now we observe that in each of this bracket, the, the terms are in geometric progression. And we all know that if geometric progression is in the form of a a r and a r square, so and so forth till a r to the power n minus 1. These are the n, uh, n terms in geometric progression. Then their sum is given by a formula which is a into r to the power n minus 1 divided by r minus 1. So if I apply here then the first term here is 1 and the common ratio is 2 for this particular bracket. Then the sum will be given by 1 into 2 to the power 3 because 3 is the number of terms here, minus 1 divided by 2 minus 1. Similarly, for the next terms, we get the first term is 1, common ratio is 3, number of terms is 3, minus 1 divided by 3 minus 1. Now, you can just compare these things with the formula. We have taken only two prime factors, so had there been only two prime factors, the sum would have been given this much portion of the formula. So if there had been more prime factors, then definitely we would have got the other brackets here also. So this is how we can actually uh, understand the formula for sum of all the factors of any number. Let's move to the next section, which is product of all the factors. Now let's understand the formula for product of all the factors. So here n is again prime factorized in this way. Then the product of all the factors of n is given by this formula. Let us understand with the help of an example that how this formula has arrived. So let me assume that the value of n is 19. So we know that 90 
the prime factor of 90 is 2 to the power 1 into 3 to the power 2 into 5 to the power 1. So the number of factors will be given by 2 into 3 into 2 which is 12. So we have to get the product of all those 12 factors of 90. Let me just write down all the factors of 90 here. So it will be 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 9, 10, 15, 18, 30, 45 and 90. Now we need to find the product of all these factors. So what, what I have done here is that I have written all the factors in an increasing order so that if I take the product of the first factor with the last factor, then I get the number as 90 or the number n itself. If I take the second factor and the second last factor which is 45, if I take the product of these two, again I will be getting the same number as 90. The same thing happens with each of the pair which I will be making in such a way that uh, for example 3 when goes with 30, again the factor will be 90. Similarly the 5 will go with 18 to make the term, to make the product as 90. 6 will go with 15 to make the product as 90 and 9 will go with 10 to make the product as 90. So this product of all these 12 can be written as the product of this, this 6 number and each of these number is 90. So what we have observed here is that if there is number n and it has some number of factors then we can make such pairs so that the product is always the number n itself. So if I multiply these 6 90s that will be equal to the product of all these factors. So I can write it as 90 to the power 6 or more appropriately if I want to write, I can write it as 90 to the power 12 by 2. Now observe that this is nothing but what the formula says. That is 12 is the number of factors of the number 90. So the product of all the factors is given by n to the power number of factors divided by 2. Now one doubt might arise in our mind that I have taken a number 90 which is not a perfect square. What if, if the number is a perfect square? Will this formula still be applicable? So let's take an example and understand it. So let me take another number n in this case which is a perfect square. So let me take the smallest or smaller number 16 which is a perfect square. So the number of factors if I factorize it with this 2 to the power 4, so I can say that the number of factors of 16 is 5. This also agrees with the with the fact that the perfect square has or number of factors of perfect square are always odd, which we have seen in the video of perfect square. Now we need to find the product of all the factors. Since 16 is a very small number, so I can write all the factors. So the number factors are 1, 2, 4, 8 and 16 and we need to find the product of all these three. Again I will do the same thing which we have done here that the first factor goes with the last one to give me the product as the number itself. Similarly the second goes with the second last to give me the number as give me the product as the number itself. Now we are left with only one factor which is the, uh, the, the square root of the number in itself. So since it cannot make any pair, I have written it here only. But I want to just manipulate this 4 so that every term should be in the form of 16, that is the number n. So 4 can be written as 16 to the power 1 by 2. Now if I want to further simplify it, it will be 16 to the power 5 by 2. Now again you can see that 5 is nothing but the number of factors of n, which is 16 here divided by 2. So this is again in the same format as the formula C. That means this formula is applicable for all the numbers whether the number is perfect square or not.